Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Common Sense Guys channel. Yeah, I do know it has been a long time, but you know, every now and again you look at certain things and you're just like, yeah, I can't, I can't let that go. I just can't let that go. Now obviously most people have looked at the title and have seen that today we're going to be talking about Dawn Butler. Today we're going to be talking about the stop that was racist, that was apparently racially profiled and was one of the most traumatic experiences of apparently her life, which is done on a daily basis, which was, from her own standard, an eight minute long recording, since the beginning of the recording to the end of the recording, of them actually stating that the reasons why they stopped her was because that they thought that a registration was somewhere up Yorkshire. And that was the reason why they stopped the car, to make sure that everybody that was in the area had legitimate reasons to be in the area. Once they realised that the actual car itself was actually registered to the owner that was in London, they kind of just went, yeah, we made a mistake, on your way. No searches were carried out, no nothing. But apparently, this is proof of institutional racism and has absolutely nothing to do with an article that she posted around about two days before this racist stop was actually produced. So ladies and gentlemen, let's actually get into the actual video today properly and let's find out what I think the reasons actually are for this stop. Let's get into it, shall we? So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Let me start off by saying why I think that this is a little bit fortuitous in timing. Around about Saturday the 8th of August, Dawn Butler writes an opinion piece in the Metro, which is about how she quotes, and I'll put this up on the screen for everybody, Clissa Dick appears to be incapable of tackling the institutional racism in the police and incapable of showing solidarity with those people who suffer from it the most. In my latest, meaning her, Metro UK column, I explain why I think Clarissa Dick should resign. Going on to say that black people shouldn't be scared to phone the police when they need help, but I was, and the reasons why I was. Which is actually really interesting, believe it or not. The main point that she actually has about why they shouldn't phone the police is completely antidotal. Which is the point that her brothers said to her when she was younger, don't phone the police, call us instead and we'll sort it out. Now going into another, by the way all of this will be linked down below so please have a look, here it is on the screen as well. You have a situation where somebody, some racist was throwing a brick through her window, car window allegedly, and she goes up to the door and actually starts talking to this gentleman because you know that's the most smartest thing in the world to do when somebody's just thrown a brick through your window to go up to the person where they live and try and confront them about it and not phone the police first or anything obviously that's the most intelligent thing that you can do in the world but let's push that to the side the bloke comes back up with another brick in his hand so obviously like any common sense person don butler backs off and realizes that she can't do anything but instead of calling the police she then calls her brother. Now, obviously, if anybody has any idea how anything works in London and with family, when you called your brother, he is going to escalate the situation further because now his little sister has just been threatened and has been threatened with, with a weapon. So he goes banging on the door and is met with a knife. Now, at this point in time, Dawn Butler is obviously scared about the interaction that is going to go on or what is or could happen. So she phones the police. Now, the police turn up, have no idea what's going on, arrest the guy that's at the door, that's obviously uh, at the door, looks like he's the agitator at that point in time, with no idea what's happened beforehand. Eventually, both of them get arrested, because obviously the police don't know what's going on. They find out that nothing actually went on from Dawn Butler's brother's side, and actually release the brother without any charges, without anything whatsoever, but apparently that's reason for people of colour not to phone the police because they're against people of colour. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not the best situation that they were in at that point in time. 
But, you know, if the police don't know what a situation is, they have to treat everybody as a suspect at that point in time. But hey, that's something for another time, isn't it? So this report that's come out from her, Dawn Butler, trying to state that Clarissa Dick should resign because of institutional racism within the police, come out on Saturday. She then gets stopped on the Sunday and now has a politicised point of being able to push this idea that the police are institutionally racist and has a video put up on Sky. Now the original video she states is around about eight minutes long and Julia Hartley Brewer actually points out that that was the original length of the video and why is it actually doctored or why is it actually cut down so much and doesn't show the whole truth so to speak. I will link to the tweet here for you so you can see what I'm talking about and see that I have some evidence for that. So now let's move on to the actual Sky News's evidence of this institutionally racist or racial profiling stop. Let's go to the story first and actually listen to Sky News last night that has a statement from the police about the whole stop, shall we? Let's, let's do that first and let's listen. My promise to the top of the, of the hour to uh, bring you the statement from the Metropolitan Police after the Labour MP Dawn Butler was um, stopped in a car in um, Hackney. Um, the Metropolitan Police have released this statement since coming to us in the last few moments. At approximately midday on Sunday the 9th of August, police stopped a vehicle in Hackney. Prior to stopping the vehicle, an officer incorrectly entered the registration into a police computer which identified the car as registered to an address in Yorkshire. Upon stopping the vehicle and speaking with the driver, it quickly became apparent that the registration had been entered incorrectly and was registered to the driver in London. Once the mistake was realised, the officers sought to explain this to the occupants. They were then allowed on their way. No searches were carried out on any individuals. One of the occupants has since been contacted by a senior officer and they have discussed the stop, subsequent interaction as well as feedback regarding the stop. We would welcome the opportunity to discuss this matter further with the occupants if they wish to do so. So that statement uh, from the Metropolitan Police after the Labour MP Dawn Butler was stopped in a car in Hackney. So this is the Sky News report that was actually part of the breaking news that actually happened on Sunday evening. And this has been updated from Monday the 10th of August. So we'll see if anything that I saw last time has actually changed. But as you can read the title, she implies that the reason why she was stopped was because of racial profiling. Now, I'm not going to do what I would normally do and literally replay what the statement was from the police. That actually state... The reason why this happened was because they entered in a registration slightly wrong and thought that somebody from North Yorkshire was a reason enough and suspicious enough to at least stop them to find out what was going on. Remembering, no searches were carried out. They were just asking what's going on. But hey, that has everything to do with racism and apparently nothing to do with suspicious activity, like why would somebody from North Yorkshire be in London, for instance? You know, simple things. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to play her video and we will go through this and try and find out what's going on. It's an interesting experience being stopped by the police on a Sunday in town. Oh, just bear me two minutes, um, run a couple of checks, hopefully you'll be able to wait. I'm just going to take those just for a second. Two police officers. <laughs> I am concerned about the reason for the stop. So that is what I'm. That's what I'm concerned about. So yeah. because, you know, we should be able to drive wherever we want in no, London because we. You're not just contained to the area where you live. No, of so that is. So that is my concern. So, like, if you're just profiling people who are driving outside their area, I think that's a ridiculous reason to stop. No, I'm, I'm if you're profiling people who are driving a certain type of car, no, that's an inappropriate reason to stop. And if you're profiling people because they're kind of their skin, that's an inappropriate yeah, reason to stop. No, no, no. I'm a member of parliament. Yeah. So this is really quite interesting to me because yeah. I've been doing a lot of work with yeah, police and stopping the surgeon, how the police are stopping the surgeon. Yeah. And actually the way you do it and the way you profile is wrong. Because what you do is you create an environment where you create animosity. So very, very quickly, before we get back to the story, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to really listen to that again. I'm not going to play the video again. I think that the video itself speaks for itself where they were stopped 
It says in the video that we're going to take some of your details down. We're going to check some of these details, so on and so forth. You know, collaborating the actual story and, you know, actual statement that the Metropolitan Police actually put out of saying that they may have got the registration wrong and that's the reason for the mix-up. Fair enough. To then cutting quite a bit out of the video supposedly if the video is supposed to be about eight minutes long which butler decided not to dispute or anything else like that towards julia hartley bureau as i pointed out earlier from the tweet that states it's around about eight minutes the original video but carrying on to then going towards the end where everything's going where basically she was allowed to go but has decided that she is going to stay longer to talk to the police to try and ascertain what's going on so on and so forth where she starts off and actually states that, well, well, if it's just because of, you know, coming from a different area, going into a different area, we should be able to drive where we want, shouldn't we? Again, collaborating the actual statement from the Metropolitan Police saying that the reason why they stopped the car was because they perceived the car to have license plates from North Yorkshire. Now, if you have somebody coming from North Yorkshire, supposedly going down into Hackney and things like that, with no blatant tourist attractions and things like that, that draws up a bit of suspicion, especially when it comes to drug dealers, mules and things like that. Now, that's not to say just because of their colour, it's to do with where they've come from to where they are. It's a suspicion, it's a motive enough for the police to stop the car and ask for licence and registration. That has nothing to do with race. But let's move back on, ladies and gentlemen, and actually get back to the story and find out what Don Butler wants done about this, shall we? Let's find out. So again, back to the story. The Labour MP Don Butler has told Sky News that she actually believes that she is a victim of racial profiling after the car she was stopped in by police. Even though the police have stated that it was solely the reason why they stopped the car was because of them thinking that it was from North Yorkshire due to a mistake that they made, which is why they apologise for that mistake made. And by the way, people, if you say that you've made a mistake and you're sorry for the mistake, that doesn't mean that they're sorry because of what Don Butler said. It actually means that they're sorry for the mistake that they made, which was thinking that the actual vehicle itself come from North Yorkshire due to a mis-input into the computer. But let's, let's move on. So, the former Shadow Equalities Minister filmed the incident, heavily edited, which happened in the London Borough of Hackney on Sunday afternoon. She said police officers stopped her black male friend, who, by the way, not that it really matters, not that it really matters the ethnicity of the, the gentleman that was driving, but is very pale in complexion. So, are they really looking for that aspect when they're stopping the vehicle? I don't know, but let's carry on. Who was driving a nice car, which was never mentioned whatsoever. It was all to do with the point of your license plate come back from North Yorkshire. Let us do some checks to find out what's going on. But, you know... Black male friend, nice car. Seems like there's a form of um, bias that has come from her preconceptions of childhood that's been embedded into her since childhood about the police being bad and against people of colour. Almost like even innocent interactions like this that we can see of so far can be interpreted when you have a bias to be a certain way. Even if the police themselves categorically are stating, no, the reason why we stopped you was because we thought you were from North Yorkshire. Again, the reason why I keep on reiterating that is because of her bias that she quite rightly wrote in the Metro of her own opinion piece. Because in her standard and her antidotal evidence and her own understanding of things, the police are biased not due to evidence, but to be and due by how she feels. Same as this, has nothing to do with any indisputable facts, but has everything, everything to do how she feels and how she believes, 
how she thinks she's a victim. I'll leave that one there. I mean, this happens to black people every single day. This happens to black men every single day, whether they're walking or driving or on a bike. It happens to them every single day. Uh, I'm sorry, are you under the impression that this type of stop and search only ever happens to black men or people of colour in general? Or do you think that it happens with people that are suspicious? Again, when I was younger, I was um, a little bit of a hoodie and we used to hang around in certain areas. There wasn't a week that didn't go by that we weren't searched in some form or another. In actual fact, we were even searched on the estate where we actually lived or where I lived. So for you to come out and say that this happens every day to black men or to people of colour is absolutely true. But it also happens to everybody that has a form of suspicion. There's a reason why they say you can't search without a form of suspicion. But again, I suppose that only matters to one aspect of a narrative rather than actually having a detailed conversation about what's going on, I suppose. The facts are this. We were driving around 10 miles an hour because the lights were changing. We, there was no illegal activity happening. We were two black people in a car in Hackney. Those are the facts, the indisputable facts. Interesting that you say that these are facts. You are correct. They are facts. They are indisputable facts. But they're not the only facts that pertain to this instant and to this occurrence. I suppose that you're going to also mention the police's statement, what they actually said, why they actually gave you the reason of why they stopped you and why they're doing the checks, and also the fact that the whole stop itself only took eight minutes and no searches were carried out and you were told to go on your way but you decided to carry on to have your discussion with them. Interesting how those indisputable facts are not brought up. Again, it's like a narrative is trying to be pushed and trying to be framed rather than any sort of form of discussion to be had or mounted. I wonder why, oh why, could you be pushing a narrative that states that somebody like Clarissa Dick and the police are institutionally racist? Oh, wait, that would be the actual article that you wrote literally the day before you were stopped. Interesting that, isn't it? So the rest of it is really up to the police. What made them think that we were suspicious? What made them punch the registration number into the system? What made them think, if we're coming from North Yorkshire, there's a problem. I mean, I don't know. Maybe there are county lines issues. I don't know. Maybe there is. I don't know. Very interesting. So you don't know what you just asked, but the fact is to you, the only facts that actually seem to matter to you at this moment in time is the fact that you're black, your friend is black, and that is the sole point and factor of why that you were stopped. Didn't matter to you of asking why they thought it was relevant to stop you because they thought that you come from Yorkshire. No idea on county lines and if there were any sort of drug trafficking that seems to be coming from Yorkshire down into London or anything else like that or how gang violence actually seems to come from any sort of instance of correlation. No, nothing like that at all. Nothing whatsoever. The only facts that matter from Dawn Butler's mouth that comes out is I'm black, my friend's black, the police stopped us, we got stopped because we were black and were racially profiled. All the other stuff that I just mentioned, I don't know, I didn't ask, and I don't care to find out because the facts are we're black, so that's the reason why we got stopped. Interesting that little Freudian slip there, isn't it? So I'm going to leave the video off with this couple of thoughts and this caption for the end, so to speak, which is a simple point, really. And I really want to make this as simple as possible for you. 
when you have somebody like Julie Hartley Brewer, maybe not the most respective of journalists out there, but a journalist nonetheless, they are saying, look, I really would like to see the footage from the start to the beginning to find out what's going on, see what actual evidence there is and see if you yourself have missed something, which I will now link to in the description box and show you here what's going on. You have Don Butler's response of going, what's the point you're trying to make, Julia? What are you trying to do, Julia? Why are you trying to go against my narrative, Julia? What's up, Julia? The point is that if somebody's asking you for evidence to show you why that this heavily edited, heavily cut video that's being produced by Sky is missing around about five to six minutes of interaction between you and the police, why is it missing? Why have you cut it out? If the whole interaction is to do with institutional racism and the whole reason for your stop is institutional racism, why is it a case of you not showing the whole video and you not showing them explaining the reasons why that you were stopped? Or is that because there is an ulterior motive to that? And when people ask you for the original, like Julia did, I'm like, I'm sure other people have asked you for the original four, you don't seem to have provided any of that. You haven't provided it on your Instagram. You haven't provided it on your Facebook. You haven't provided it on your Twitter. You provided it nowhere. The original footage, nowhere. Edited footage, everywhere. So when somebody asks you for it, you just deny it and say, what are you trying to prove? Interesting, isn't it? Interesting. The next point that I will quickly make, and it will be the last one, honestly, honest to God, is that... We are aware, this comes from the Metropolitan uh, Police Federation, and I will link to the tweet here so everybody can read it along with me, is we are aware of video footage that is circulating on social media this evening following the stopping of a car in Hackney. Our colleagues want to be able to share their body warm video of the incident, and as a federation, we are calling for this to happen. So let's put this into perspective. You've got... Dawn Butler accusing the police of being institutionally racist, that the whole reason why they stopped Dawn Butler was because of her colour and because of her friend's colour that was in the car with her, right? That's what's allegedly happening. She has heavily edited a video that was over eight minutes long, down to about a minute and 30 seconds, maybe two minutes at the absolute max, and has categorically come out and said, look, I believe that the reason why I was stopped was this. I don't care about the fact that the police have already put out a statement saying it wasn't. I don't care that the police themselves in the eight minute video, as you can tell by the cut up, actually explained that the reason why was because of the misinterpretation of the registration of the vehicle and coming from North Yorkshire. That has nothing to do with anything. It is how Dawn Butler has perceived it to be a victimization of she's black, she was stopped, so the police are racist. Don't get me wrong, two plus two in this instance obviously equals five. Yes, I know, I went there. But coming back to the actual point, if the Met Police are saying, look, we're happy to give you all of our body cam footage to show you the whole incident in its entirety and truth, and you've got one person that's heavily edited the video, what one do you reckon's got more aspects of telling the truth? The one that wants to show you the whole video with no editing, or the one that's heavily edited the video? I'll leave that there because unfortunately we're not going to know all of the facts for quite a while, unfortunately. But it seems to me that Dawn Butler has come to this, should we say realisation or understanding, that she believes that the police do everything towards certain people of colour because of their colour and has nothing to do with them actually having other suspicions or other reasoning or rationale to do anything. If the police stop a black person or a person of colour in this instance, then it's solely to do with their institutional racism and no other form of explanation, even when they explain it, is the correct explanation. Her belief of what happened is correct. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I bid you farewell. I bid you adieu. And I believe that the world is fucked. Carry on. See you all again real soon. Bye-bye for now. Take care.